Uh, okay, there's uh, what the MOSFET uh, drain signal looks like uh, showing the parasitic oscillation uh, on the LaCroix. And as you can probably see, um, better is not always, I mean, digital is not always better. Digital scopes have a lot of nice features, but they don't always display the waveform uh, as beautifully as um, the uh, analog scopes do. So what I've got here is the MOSFET drain signal responding to the 555 timer. That little bundle right there is uh, let me go up here. Uh, drain or uh, duty cycle control. That little bundle up there is that bit of parasitic oscillation that happens uh, just before the MOSFET turns on before the MOSFET turns on and it's being sent from the 555 timer. What I've done on here on the D trace of the scope, the D trace here is uh, I've got it set up to show the zoom in time and uh, voltage of that uh, top trace there. So I'm zooming in using the scope's features to show just this little portion right here, okay, and I've expanded that in both time and voltage, so you can see that spindly bundle of spikes, and that's what you get on a digital oscilloscope. It's much different from even though even though this is a one gigahertz bandwidth oscilloscope, 500 mega samples per second per channel. It's still because it's showing you pixels it still does not resolve that uh, signal the way the analog scope does. <clears throat> the analog scope actually shows you what's in there, but the digital scope just shows you pixels. Okay, So digital scopes have some useful functions, but they aren't, they aren't the be-all and end-all of, uh, of scopology for sure. Okay, now I'm going to go up here and vary the duty cycle pot, and you can see how that, that spindle changes. Right. That's that parasitic oscillation, and there it's dropped out completely just before the 555 timer stops functioning. And there it comes in. And there's all the way to one end on that pot control there. And there's all the way to the other end. The thing just sort of swallows itself just before the timer stops functioning. Okay, now this oscilloscope, its triggering circuit can be tricked. It, uh, the trigger is this little symbol right here, so it's triggering right now on a nice clear zone. And this is the delay, so where those two uh, arrows intersect is the point where the oscilloscope is actually triggering. So what I'm going to do now is move that trigger voltage level down until we get into that spindle. And you can see that even the LaCroix oscilloscope loses trigger when it tries to read that spiky uh, parasitic oscillation. There. But because it's a digital oscilloscope, it doesn't lose trigger quite in the same way. It's doing its best to do what you're telling it to, which is to tell you what's happening right there at that point in time. And if I go, I can cause it to get trigger cleanly again by going below that spindle. But normally we trigger on positive going spikes, so right there. So remember now, this is the MOSFET drain pin. And hopefully I've shown you amply that when the MOSFET drain pin is high, the load is off. When the drain pin goes down, that's when the load is actually on and is conducting uh, current. This is when the timer is sending a high pulse to the gate and the MOSFET's turning on. Now the MOSFET is off, so this is your off trailing edge spike, just like normal, and this oscillation is not happening on the trailing edge, it's happening on the leading edge, and it's occurring before the MOSFET turns on. Thank you.